you know, I've been following the polling for the presidential elections. I mean, this perch um, sitting here on the moon observing the world sees all sorts of countries and everything else. But this is my home country. So this is the thing that I pay most attention to. And going into the 2020 elections, things are heating up and things are going to be rather fascinating going from state to state as these guys slug it out. There's a poll that came out in California saying uh, uh, Biden, first place, Warren, second place, Sanders comes in third. But there's something strange about this poll, something weird that I kind of want to talk about. Tulsi Gabbard subverted and in a not so subtle way. Welcome to the Soapbox. My name is Jamal Thomas. This is the Progressive Soapbox. One of my subscribers sent me an email. This video is not going to be long, but I do kind of want to point this out because I think the guy had a point. And I feel him on this, so I'm going to kind of draw a spotlight around it or draw a circle around it. Polling comes out. Uh, Berkeley. Uh, let me be specific. Institute of Governmental Studies, University of California, Berkeley, California. All right. So polling is done on the various candidates in the race. Elizabeth Warren pulls into the number two position. Joe Biden pulls into number one. Well, he's already the number one. He gives first choice, second choice, first and second choices combined. It gives a little detail about how, um, for the most part, Warren, Sanders, Harris, and Biden, the rest of the people go back into single digits. I'm sorry, Buttigieg. Everybody else is single digits. Nobody else is close. However, there's something weird about this poll. There's something missing in this poll. Oddly, strangely, missing in this poll. Biden, Warren, Sanders, Harris, Buttigieg, Beto, Booker, Yang, Klobuchar, Castro, Swalwell, Gillibrand, Inslee, Hickenlooper, the spiritual guru, Mary Ann Williamson. The spiritual guru, Marianne Williamson, is on this poll. Steve Bullock, I have no idea who that even is. Tim Ryan, John Delaney, and the rest are undecided. What's missing? What's missing in this poll? Maybe you can find it. What is missing in this poll? How do you have... The spiritual guru, Mary Ann Williamson. And by the way, the spiritual guru, Mary Ann Williamson, if you notice, negligible. Hickenlooper, negligible. Gillibrand, negligible. Swalwell, I don't even know who that is. Negligible. Castro, one. Are you telling me that Tulsi Gabbard? Williamson gets it, but Gabbard doesn't? Steve Bullock makes the poll, but Gabbard does it. You didn't even put a dot dot by Gabbard's name. You didn't put her on the poll at all. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. How do you leave Tulsi Gabbard out of the poll? That's amazing. Like, I guess my point is this. I wouldn't take too much of a deal with this if Swalwell wasn't here. If Hickenlooper wasn't here, if Williamson wasn't here, I wouldn't take issue with it. Because at that point, it would be, look, across the board, there's certain people we didn't put into the poll because, you know, for various reasons. But I don't know how you put Hickenlooper. Fact of the matter is Tulsi Gabbard is going to be in the first debate. And it's very possible that Tulsi Gabbard makes it to the third debate. The fact, of the, the, the fact that she gets to the first debate should, in and of itself, at the very least, have you include her into the poll. Look, there are some versions where you talk bad about the person. There are some versions where you said the person is getting paid by Russian candidates, which is, uh, you know, Russian people or, or people who are okay with Russia. It's like three people out of 160,000. But yeah, she's being paid by the Russians. You can smear her. You can go after her and everything else. And then there's also this other subversion. Just ignoring. Just ignoring. Do a poll. 
and don't bring in somebody who's going to be on the presidential debate stage. Extraordinary. Berkeley. Berkeley. Right here. Berkeley IGS poll. One of my subscribers, John Frankels, sent me this. And he sent me a letter. I, I think he'd be okay with me showing this letter. Essentially saying, I've reviewed your recent poll. A significant candidate is missing from the results. Even though Tulsi Gabbard qualifies for the first debate, you have omitted her entirely from the Democratic presidential race. He's right. He's right. How do you... She's going to be on a debate stage. How do you leave her off the poll with somebody who's going to be on the first two debates? Even if you think she has no chance, even if you think she has no chance, even if you say she has no chance, she's not going to go anywhere, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, she's on a debate stage. How do you put some random guy named Swalwell but leave out the person that's in Congress? I guarantee you the public has no idea who Hickenlooper is. Who Bullock is, who Ryan is, Delaney is. I guarantee you the public has no idea who these people are. And yet they're on your poll. That's amazing. Berkeley, California, ladies and gentlemen. California Democratic primary race. Yeah. Institute of Governmental Studies. Good job. Good job. Let's see. I, I, like I said, I'm not going to keep this long because there are other videos that I want to do um, that are far, far more... Um, interesting than this one so let me somebody comment it this is probably gonna be kills for a living telling me that toss a gap there's no chance am i right am i right am i right am i right did i nail it did i nail it did i nail it oh hope i started to feel hope for a campaign when she was demonetized by fox but it looks like she slipped back into being ignored hmm. i mean She's going to be on the debate stage. So wait till the debate stage takes place. And th there are a few things that are intersecting here. I don't believe Tulsi Gabbard is going to win the presidential race. First point. But all objectives are not the same. The objective may not be to be president. The objective may be literally to get my ideas out and to get the American public pushed in this direction of looking at how we engage the world in a different way. If that's her objective, then that can be one. Whether she gets, you know, the full committal and everything else. If you remember when Sanders ran in 2016, it's possible, it's likely Sanders had no thought that he was going to win the presidency. And part of the evidence for that is him running in 2020 believes he can win. Him running in 2016 believes he could not. And they ran two fundamentally different campaigns. The guy who ran full bore with, you know, um, no care in the world. It's different now because he believes he can win and there are certain positions that he needs to, you know, certain ways he needs to cover himself. In this case, Tulsi Gabbard may be somewhat of the same animal in this case of running a race, not necessarily because she thinks she can win the race, but more so because she wants to push the conversation in a particular direction. If that's true, then that in and of itself may be a win. Don't look at win as like, you know, everything has to be a checkmate of the king. There's some things where you position stuff. Her goal in this may not necessarily be the end result of the presidency. Her goal in this may be to change the conversation in the country. This poll did ignore her, but this is one poll, and this is one poll in the state of California. And again, she's going to be on a debate stage. Hold off on judgment until you see the debates and you see how things shake out after the debates. So we'll see from there. Um, I'm not going to keep this because I have a lot more shows to do, so I'm going to leave this here. If you guys enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe. You can always support through PayPal or Patreon. Thanks so. I see you momentarily. I have a show of Sanders that apparently is a barn burner. Um, Socialist at the Poor People's Campaign. Palpable, I love it. See you guys in a few.